<laughs> oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. As soon as I saw the Titan Hunter, I was like, yeah, I definitely have to do this game for sure. Because there was like, this is the first Tide Hunter. I think this is the first Tide Hunter of this tournament. At least the first Tide Hunter of the main stage for sure. And I just said pretty much in the last video, I think it was uh, IG Newbie Game 1, where I was talking about... I think it was the IG Newbie. Anyway, um, that whichever team picks Tide Hunter is definitely going to win. Now, the reason I said that is because team fight is super important, and Tide Hunter just destroys, ravages team fights, right? So my only issue is that looking at Newbie's lineup right now, there's <laughs> team fight is not what it screams to me right now. You know, you. It's it's like Earth Spirit is yeah, he's, he's eh. and when it comes to team fighting, Bloodseeker not really the hero you think about when you say team fight. Um, Dazzle is good. Dazzle is great for team fight. That's the only one. But on the other hand, I don't know what that random butt was there for. But on the other hand, you look at the enemy lineup and you've got Nightstalk who does jack in team fight. Um, Winter Wyvern is. There, but Lycan also not really that amazing for team fights. Although, you know, it can be pretty good because of your um, Necro. Oh my days! And then you've got more team fight. That's probably again the first tinker of this tournament, of this uh, main stage at least. And we've got two new heroes in this in this game. So looking at the lineup as a full lineup for IG, they've got. A little bit of team fight, not a lot of team fight. They've got a little bit of team fight. They've got pretty solid um, vision advantage with the Night Stalker. They've got the Howl advantage from the Lycan. They take towers really quickly. They've got the Tinker Burst to kill people like Tinker against Bloodseeker. Definitely, definitely, Bloodseeker is not going mid, right? That that's just not going to happen. Now you got to put Bloodseeker on the carry roll. You're going to pick something else for your mid hero now. But the thing is, like Bloodseeker carry. You know, they, well, IG ran in that last game on Burning, and they did win. So, I mean, Bloodseeker carry can happen, but I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty confident Storm Spirit, right? So Storm versus Tinker played this matchup on both sides many, many times. Um, Storm is a counter to Tinker in the late game. Tinker is a counter to Storm in the early game. And when we say early game, I'm talking about the first eh, 10 minutes of the game, really, before, um, up until Storm Spirit gets his ultimate... I would love to watch this game from um, the mids perspective. I want to see both OP and SCC. I'm pretty pro most probably going to be watching it from Storm's perspective because, to be honest with Tinker, um, it's kind of straightforward. It's your Tinker is going to be winning the winning the lane, and you want to watch it from Storm's perspective. That how does he survive? Um, most likely, you're going to have lots of Earth Spirit. You're going to have lots of Dazzle coming in to save you. Um, I haven't looked at this newbie's lineup from the um, timing perspective, right? So Storm Spirit does not come online until at least 14-15 minutes into the game. So that that's okay. Um, that's kind of okay. But at the same time, your Tidehunter doesn't come online till pretty late as well. Your Tidehunter is going to be making that mech. I think this is a pretty weak lineup for newbie because if you think about it, uh, IG's lineup, you know, Night Stalker, first, first nighttime hits, let's say four to six, let's say six minutes in, right? Six minutes in, you've got Baboko on the Monkey King ready to make plays. You've got Winter Vibrant, lots of nuke, lots of damage coming in. You've got the Tinker able to not travel, but at least TP in. And especially if he goes for that um, laser rocket build, which I think I haven't really seen that happening a lot in pro games, but I think if there was a if there was a game to play laser rocket in a pro game this was this is it this is the game to do that um so point is that ig come online so quickly they have a lot to pressure lanes they have a lot to sort of gank and why is he keep pressing yeah so on the other hand you look at newbie storm spirit doesn't do jack shit in team fights before he gets like solid items right the, before 10 minutes you're not going to see him rotate anywhere you're not going to see him do anything at all i mean i've seen i've been seeing more and more um cores rotate to uh take team fights but like od in that other game that we saw 
and even Drow Rangers and CKs going in, but Storm really cannot do any of that, right? Storm definitely has to farm, so you're not going to see any of that from <coughs> from Storm's bird. Uh, give them, give him a, give him a ward. You would, I'd save that ward later on. I don't know why SCC took it. Um, S Triple C took it. I think you want to save the, um, you want to leave that ward over there so you can eat it up with a tango later on. But I don't know. It's whatever. Uh, they obviously are hard level prep players. They want to get that vision out as soon as possible. Um, Monkey King kind of the better hero to be played against Tide Hunter, to be honest, because Tide cannot remove those stacks immediately. And um, also with the slow uh, from, I, I, I'm assuming Monkey King's got Orb of Venom. Okay, I, I expect Monkey King to pick up Orb of Venom pretty soon. Right, so let's look at this line. L let's look at the laning phase, right? So, um, S Triple C is gonna maintain. Oh, he was looking at the Corey and he messed up the block. That hurts. That hurts so bad. He really, really, really needed that, um, that, um, block to be on the high ground. And they're gonna put some pressure on Storm as well. Wow, Storm is gonna get destroyed this game. So, you can see he's already got. He's, he he knows what this matchup is. He's he's played this matchup a million times as well. Like he knows exactly what he's in for. Um and he's like got lots and lots of regen. I'm surprised he's not pulling the pulling the creep wave up on the high ground. Um I don't know why. I'm not sure. Why is he keeping the creep wave where it is? Why is he not pulling aggroing it up? That's uh kinda surprising. I'm not I'm not sure. He wants it. Oh right, right, right. He wants to be double waved, right? He wants to be double waved because this is this is a game where sorry, no no no, he's he's trying to double wave. But that doesn't make sense either because even then he should have been pulling it up. I think what he needs to wants to do is bring it up to his high ground. Uh so that he can farm in the safety of his jungle. But he's not doing that either. So I'm not I'm kinda a little bit confused. Um not sure what is happening or uh, I, I don't know. I don't know why he didn't aggro. He should have aggroed. Now the now he's like standing on top of the enemy high ground. And the thing is, like, if you rotate two heroes right now, obviously there aren't two heroes. Like Monkey King jumps in. Um, Winter Wyvern throws out his. Obviously they know Tide Hunter says telling him, you know, we've got Monkey and Winter Wyvern all both of them are bought, so you're okay, mate. But uh, it doesn't take that long to get the rotation coming in, so. Uh, I think that's a uh, you you in a storm versus tinker matchup. I found that the only way you survive this matchup is if you uh, stay on your high ground, maintain your high ground as often as possible or as much as possible, and just farm underneath your tower. You're not going to get much CS, but you're going to get all the levels at least. It's going to be really hard for Tinker to deny anything because you know obviously you're, it's right underneath your tower, and you're not going to get ganked. That's the biggest thing, especially in these pro games where you're going to get ganked a lot. This is a really, really big factor. So this is why I'm a little bit surprised that he's he's actually not doing that. On top of that, he brings in the Dazzle mid as well to, um, to, 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 to what's it called, um, protect him. But Dazzle is sharing his XP. You really, really need Storm to get XP, get level 6 as quickly as possible. Like if anything, Dazzle wants to be standing way further behind, not leeching any XP at all. It doesn't matter how bad it is for Dazzle. But anyway, let's see what happens. Uh, he is going to grab that bottle first, as we can see, because this is not a game where, this is not a lane where he's looking to uh, get the extra damage and the extra stats from the Null Talisman, because he's not really going to be looking to, to farm too much. He's looking at that. In that particular case, he actually had to use Expenses Mana just so that he could uh, guarantee that lasted, because, you know, it's every single asset that you can get is so super important because you're not going to get any lasted. I'm a bit surprised that he brought that walking, the courier is still walking when you have Baboka on the enemy team. Wait, yeah, uh, it's not Baboka on the enemy team, it's... Wait, what? Baboka is the monkey king, right, 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 right. I thought Baboka was Earth Spirit, then I, then I realized uh, Earth Spirit is on Nibi and... Yeah, my bad, sorry. <laughs> Uh, but even then, even then, even if the Boga is Monkey King, he's always going to be sniping Courier. So I'm kind of surprised that Courier is still walking. Although at the same time, Dazzle is probably really poor. Um, I don't know. Earth Spirit is pretty rich though, so definitely should have been. The Courier is still walking. 
four minutes in, four and a half minutes in almost. That's a bit of a weird one. All right, so uh, another issue with the quarry being walking is that you can't bottle crow, which I think S Triple C is just bringing that courier over to him right now so that he can bottle bottle crow, dude. Bottle crow, no bottle crow. Wow. Uh, right. Not sure why there's no bottle crow. Because um, it was four minutes in, it's gonna be five minutes now. So you know you're not taking any runes. All right, he's gonna go and stack the jungle. That's always a bit late for that. He just unlucky, just really unlucky. And this is what I was talking about. Just, just the dominance. I'm surprised. Um, I think, yeah, they radiant doesn't ha does not have high ground vision. Otherwise, definitely there would have been a rocket. Rockets going up. No, radiance does have vision. I see that ward right there. There's a ward right here. So kind of surprised. Tinker did not wait. Tinker does not have rockets. I think he does have rockets. Why didn't he throw the rockets to cancel itself? That that would have been such a huge play. All right, so S Triple C is no option but to farm jungle camps now, and that's that's power off Tinker because um, at this point S Triple C does not know if Tinker is laser rocket build or or Marsh's machine build because if it is a laser rocket build that means you just did. And to oh, yeah, the other the other thing is that even if he is uh, Marsh's machine build, it doesn't matter because you're not gonna get any farm. You're not farming over there. Tinker is now maintaining his high ground, and this is the thing that I was talking about. Once you lose the high ground as a storm spirit, and the enemy team can enemy team wants to maintain that his high ground, you're not gonna get it back. You're literally not gonna get it back. As we can see, Storm is just keeping sorry, Tinker is just keeping that high ground on his side. He's not gonna let it go. Um or rather I'd be pretty I'd be really surprised if he did let it go. So um yeah. He's gonna clarity up, he's gonna bottle up, and he's gonna just keep on farming. Uh, keep on farming there. You know what? You should be able to plant that um, GG branch, and you should be able to eat a clarity as well. <laughs> like, yeah, that'd be weird. And get the double region from the clarity. Anyway, so this is a safe way to... This is probably the first time in my entire life that I've seen a storm against Tinker and Storm not die um, pre-level 6. So this is kind of like... Uh, he might die level at level... Um, in the next couple of minutes because I believe Tinker is going for the laser rocket. No, he's not. He's actually going for the Martian Machines build. So, um, I don't know. I don't know. I really felt like this was a game where you want to go for... You 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 can go for, potentially go for the laser rocket build. Uh, map is completely blank. Map, map is completely black. He has the zip. Oh, no. That is what I was just talking about. The map is completely black. There is nothing you can do. That one ward in the on the bot rune just got placed right now. Storm spread. <laughs> and he died. He died at level 6 as well. He died after he got level 6. That's so sad. <coughs> oh boy. Oh man. Oh man. That cancerous combo. Third spirit plus Bloodseeker. You you ulti somebody and you kick them. Now this is the surprise movement that I was talking about. Like, why is Storm here? And what exactly is he expecting to get from this bot lane? And do you not expect people to see you be here? Because uh, you, you have to know people have got wards there. So did he just TP bot just so that he could give his Earth spirit some mana? What? <laughs> wow. Okay. That is, that is pretty damn dank. That that is again. I've never seen that. I've never seen that happen. I've never seen a mid laner do that. That's just amazing. Okay, okay. Um, yeah, be a little bit selfless, guys. That is just amazing. What? What? Right. Continuing on. Continuing on. So yeah, this is what I was talking about. The storm spirit is just gonna be farming, constantly farming. He just died once, so that's also a big deal. Night Stalker, so when, I, when you see Night Stalker pop his ult, you know, that's just, you You got to be careful everywhere. It's like, you know somebody's coming for you. Um, Tide Hunter is the one who's going to go down, so that's eh, whatever. Uh, Tide is, Tide looks like Tide's having a relatively bad lane, but I'm pretty sure there's there are stacks over here. 
Fort Hyde. Um, or not. Whatever. Maybe he took them just now. Alright, so nice big creep bay pushing in. And he's gonna farm that up. He's gonna get uh, another level off this, level 9 now. He's really good to be level 9. You got maximum farm potential now. You got maxed out remnant and overload. It's really nice. And daytime, so... I mean, it was daytime. Nice to go pop this all. But now, Storm knows for the next eh, few minutes, um, three minutes or two minutes now, he's completely safe. So he can just farm away. Um, is he going to TP? He's not going to TP, is he? Lucky rune. Oh, nice. And a region rune. He might try to... Oh, uh, invis plus region. So this is an opportunity. This is a rare opportunity that you get a storm spread and you can potentially gank. It looks like he's going to go for the Winter Wyvern, and that's it. Winter Wyvern dead. Beautiful. Beautiful play. Just beautiful play. Pristine, but you're not going to kill that guy because you don't have your um, stun. This is why I like to pick up a value uh, vortex point instead of the overload, maxing out overload. Just because of the situations like these, at the same time, the only reason why he did go for that gank attempt is because he had a region rune plus an invis rune. I mean, even if he has just invis, I don't see him going there because he has because because the thing is, if you have just invis, you go in, you get that kill, and you're out of mana. What do you have to do? You have to go all the way back to base. The amount of money you got from getting that kill is going to be less than the amount of money you can make just from farming with all of that mana in the jungle. Because you have to go all the way back to base, you're probably going to TP back down, so that's 50 gold anyway. You probably got 300 gold from getting that kill on the Winter Wyvern, and that's like 150 total, 150 total gold that you made from that kill, and you can definitely get a lot more from jungling, from the amount of mana that you expend. So, that's probably, that's obviously why he did not, people don't level up Electric Vortex, but I was listening to Blitz the other day um, on his channel, and he, he... As of late, he has made the case against. Um, he has the made. He's made a case for uh, leveling up electric vortex much earlier on. I I usually like to do. I, I usually like to go for a two one one build. Um, sometimes. That's a kill. I mean, this is the situation where you know. Look at that. Dazzle died. I mean, Dazzle doesn't die there if you have Electric Vortex. 100% Dazzle does not die. Monkey King was able to turn around and throw a stun down. That'll do a lot of damage. Dazzle doesn't die if you have a Electric Vortex there. So, not a big fan of uh, not living a very, uh, very greedy build, to be honest. Anyway, so you're going to go for the Bloodstone, which is very normal. Which is what you expect. So, he's going to go farm the bot lane. Uh, Monkey King is definitely dead, so you're pretty safe to do this. And the thing is, now they actually did not put a lot of pressure on Storm. You know, you you expect you don't expect Storm to be level six at six minutes in against a Tinker. That's actually quite surprising. I don't know how the rest of the game was going. Like, if the supports really needed to be in other lanes, because this is actually quite surprising that uh, a Storm Spirit is having like he had a hard time in the first two minutes he died once at the six minute mark but that was mostly due to poor warding um otherwise he probably wouldn't have died actually he wouldn't have died if there was any wards on the map like some some any like top lane or bot lane uh there are any wards because he would have seen rotation his rotation came from top and bot to kill him uh but yeah this is a hard counter to tinker and he's actually farming really really well he he's gonna get a 16 minute or Maybe even a sub 16 minute blink dagger. Sorry, blink dagger as in uh, bloodstone. So, one thing that I am a little bit surprised about is that he actually went for treads. I normally go for um, mana boots before uh, mana boots to complete my bloodstone and then go for treads, go back for treads because mana boots just gives you a lot better. Um, you know, you, you get more mana for farming, it accelerates your farm a little bit more. Um, I forgot Blink, Blitz was making a case for, uh, Blitz was explaining when you want to go for treads first. I believe he was talking about when you have, all oh, right, right, right. So he's up against the Tinker and he wants to keep treads for morphing into strength so that he can avoid deaths, uh, avoid the huge 
incoming burst damage. So that's maybe that's what it is. Maybe that's what it is. Most likely that's what it is. So he's just going to keep farming in the jungle. And that's fantastic. He is really, really racking up that that nice gold right there. Um, has to unfortunately go back to base. Could have used the shrine, but he's a very selfless player. So he doesn't want to use up the team shrine right now. Definitely, I would have used the team shrine. Screw the team. <laughs> so far, so far pretty interesting. Let's look at Tinker now. Tinker's got BLTs. BLTs. He can let us know later. Um, and he's got a blink dagger 14 minutes in. What? Wow, that's... Tinker's had a great game. It's top of the net worth. Really having a fun time. This is what I was talking about. The enemy team does not have a lot of heroes for pressuring in, pressuring um, pressuring Tinker or the entire lineup. So this is going to be very interesting to watch. And Night Soccer is going to get killed. Uh, I, I want to see some nice ultimates from um, <coughs> Tide because... Because I assessed that Tidehunter was a pick that is going to be really crucial in this TI, <laughs> in this patch, in this meta, um, and is going to you know win this game. So uh, I don't want to be proven wrong. Although most of the times I I don't mind being proven wrong, but this is something I actually put considerable amount of thought into <laughs> and I think that uh, Tide is a super important key although at the same time you know each uh, newbie did not really pick fantastic teamfight heroes around Tide when you have a Tide Hunter you want that Sven you want that Juggernaut you want that anti-mage a hard ass carry who's gonna come in and who will destroy the entire enemy lineup in the two minutes uh, two minutes two seconds or so that Tide is gonna um have his his ravage down so um in this case you've only got storm spirit and bloodseeker and they are okay in the in the sense that there is a lot of damage but i, I don't know i don't know let's see what happens it says triple c man he's, he's gonna kill everybody in the rampage duration what is it 2.5 2 2.4 2 2.8 uh, rounded about 2.5 Right, so yeah, 16 minute. He would have had a 16 minute or sub 16 minute blink, uh, um, sub 16 minute uh, soul booster, sub 16 minute bloodstone if he had actually not gone for a full out tread. So um, yeah, he's he's keeping up amazing farm. They send some gang coming in and they run away, and they were right. Wow. Um, okay, that's pretty cool. He's gonna go back to base. He's got a DD rune. He doesn't have enough. He might actually sell his null because you get 225-ish gold and he needs... Nah, he's not going to get it, so he's going to sell it. Nah, he's going to get it after this creep wave in a jungle camp. If he doesn't miss any last hits and he misses one. That's sad. Rough life. Rough life. Alright, let's see how far Tinker is. Tinker is getting his ag, so... That's, that's a really important, like, if you don't, this is the issue right now. You got a Tide Hunter, and that's fantastic. If you throw out a Ravage, you know, and you don't get Tinker in your Ravage, that Ravage is absolutely useless. It is absolutely useless, because if you look at the lineup, other than, uh, pretty much other than Earth Spirit, right, which is a 5 position, 4 position support hero with not that significant amount of damage, there is... Not a lot of magic damage here, you know. So Storm Spirit has some magic damage in the Remnant, but you miss if you miss the right click, you don't get the Overload proc. So it's like if Tinker gets his laser out during that Ravage, that's 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 a useless Ravage. That's a use Ravage completely wasted. So I don't know, man. Um, I feel like Storm Spirits' job will have to be to go into that back line and get get that um, Tinker. That's a Ravage. And look at that. No damage. Nothing happens off of that Ravage. And it wasn't even because... Um, it wasn't even because of the Tinker. It was just because you don't have the heroes you need to get stuff done during that Ravage. 
I think that was a three man, at least three, four man ravage, right? That was an amazing ravage, but no damage because you don't have the heroes. You don't have the team fight heroes to go um, to to utilize that ravage to the maximum. You have storm spirit, but storm spirit, as we said right now, like even though if it's eight, even though it's eighteen minutes and storm spirit's got bloodstone, that's not enough. There's no damage. Also, he had used like majority of his mana pool um, to go in and do whatever he did to get that one kill, and that's it. You can't go back again because ravage happened afterwards and. You, you you can't you really can't use um the remaining amount of mana that you have because then you're trapped in and suddenly you die and then you use up all your bloodstone and that's it you're dead game's over gg so he's going for the um orchid pretty pretty, pretty great item i am i'd be interested to know what he's gonna go after the orchid though like right now um He's obviously going to assess what the issue is, but right now, looking at the lineup, you've got uh, Sora's biggest issue is silence, right? Um, you've got the Night Stalker. At the same time, you've got the Winter Wyvern who can ulti you. So I feel um, Lincoln's is most likely the item he's going to choose. Most likely. And that'll also protect him afterwards when Lycan does go for that um, Assault Cuirass in the later stages of the game. So, I feel like Lincoln's is definitely, most definitely, that would have been my choice. But obviously, that's not something that you want to, <laughs> your, your third item isn't what you're going to want to choose before you even make your second item. So, he's, he's going to assess on the way. At the moment, that's what it looks like. Let's see what happens afterwards. Are they going to contest this Roche? They don't have Ravage. They're not going to contest this Roche. Or maybe they are. I don't know. Don't think they should. And Roche is dead, so they're not going to contest it. If they had Ravage, they could have walked in. They don't have Ravage. And, nope. Oh, Tinker's gone. You're not going to do anything now. They need some Tinker Wards. They need some Tinker Wards. They need to kill Tinker. Tinker is so big. And he has died not a single time. He has not died a single time. But you have a, you have a great counter to Tinker. This is where it's going to be like, who's how, how good a Tinker... It doesn't matter how good a Tinker player you are. Storm is going to get on top of you. Storm is going to kill you. Uh, all Storm needs is an Orchid. Once he gets an Orchid, you're pretty much dead. Like, even if he doesn't get an Orchid, like if he catches you, you're dead. So let's see what happens. And that was a pretty risky TP for Tinker. Oh, okay. Never mind. He TP'd in the... Oh, my days. Oh, my days. Oh, nice. So Tinker is going for Night Stalker. He knows Night Stalker is the one who can silence him. And can really, really do a lot of damage to him. That was a completely useless, wasted Ravage. Completely wasted Ravage. Do you Ravage? How many people did you Ravage? Zero? Or one? Get out, Storm. Oh, Storm's dead. Deny it, Bloodstone, deny Never mind, you've got supports. 17 Bloodstone charges now. That is, this is so far, this is, both the mid laners are having a fantastic, phenomenal game. And they were really lucky in the sense that Tinker had just TP'd bot. So it takes about 8 to 9 seconds for Tinker to come back, uh, come to the lane. Or maybe 6 seconds if he doesn't want to go back to base, depending on what he's done by the time he's gone bot. So um, it takes quite a long while. And those 5, 6, 7 seconds are... Massive when we're talking about Dota team fight. So that went pretty well for Nibi, but that Ravage was completely useless. Um, I'm 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 really sad that so far Tide hasn't had the impact that I think that he's his potential is that he's capable of having. But so far, Nibi has been winning every single team fight. So, how much of the impact was Ravage and how much was it everything else? I think mm, Ravage, not so much. Everything else, a lot more. All right, let's see if Storm goes to that team fight. He can potentially, but they don't have Ravage, so they can't go for that team fight, to be honest. So, Storm's just going to keep farming jungle? At least he should be pushing the lane. And he is pushing the lane now. Long zap. We're gonna get the bounty rune. They're gonna give up their tower. Storm's not really pushing the tower. What? Storm not really great at pushing towers. So, what are you gonna do? They take their tower. They get back. But newbie have 
pretty much just taken over this bot lane. Oh yeah, they had um, Aegis as well. No, they lost the Aegis in the last fight, so I don't know. It's just a Tide Ravage, really. The thing is, like, I was thinking, if you're playing Enigma, then why not play Tide? Enigma, you know, Black Hole can get cancelled. Sure, it's a better ultimate than Tide's ultimate if you get all people. I don't know, no. Actually, no, never mind. They're both very similar ultimates, to be honest. Like, Tide's ultimate get catches everyone. Enigma ultimate, you know, it brings people together so you can land your AoE combos a lot more. But Tide's ultimate is in... I think it's actually better than Enigma. It's just because... Even people who are hiding in the sidelines are going to be caught out with it. And also Enigma's ultimate can get cancelled. And that's the issue. Like Enigma's ultimate always get, gets cancelled. And people build towards cancelling that ultimate BKB piercing spells and whatnot. So Tide is so much better because you can't really cancel his ultimate. And even if you silence him, he takes a little bit of damage and it's on. Oh, nice. Nice. I didn't even think about... Um, I didn't even think about Bloodse uh, uh, uh what's his name? Monkey King, right? So the other another item that you can make on Storm Spirit this game, even though uh, for most applications it would be good is Shiva's Guard, right? Even though you don't have a lot of right click damage coming in from the enemy team, apart from obviously Lycan, Shiva's Guard is going to be so amazing because you can catch out people in the trees like uh, the Tinker and the Monkey King. So this is actually a fantastic game for Storm Spirit. Uh, so he's going for that BKB. I expected him to go for Lincolns just because the thing with Lincolns is there are really only two spells you're trying to avoid. So that's my reason. That was my reasoning behind going for Lincolns because Night Stalker Silence and Winter Wyvern's Ult. Those are the two things that you don't want to be casted on you. And everything else is just menial, right? You've got Tinker's um, Laser. Not a big deal. It's not something that Storm needs to worry about. Tide is gonna die now. Oh no! That is definitely not what you wanted. Oh wow! Storm's on top. And nothing else happens. Wow. That was not a great team fight for Nibri. And Ravage wasted. Completely wasted. Who is KP? KP is such an amazing player. What is he... What is he doing? Orchid is completed up on Storm right now, so I expect him to be going for those. I'm actually kind of sad that he's building uh, BKB. I really don't see why. Like you, you're gonna get Tinker Tinker lasers. You you don't care. Tinker rockets. You just a little bit of damage, and like Storm is zapping through the air so much all the time that rocket is never gonna land on you. Never. Right, so Rocket is not even an issue. So uh, Night Stalker's um, slow, his his uh, void, void is it called void? What is it called? I think it's called void. It is, yeah. Night Stalker's void does does a little bit of damage, slows you down. Storm doesn't give a shit about being slowed down. Night Stalker's silence one issue, right? And then Monkey King stun such a low duration, damage just a little bit, and the chances the Monkey King gets a stun on you so unlikely, so unlikely. Nothing from, um, what's it called, Lycan. really don't see the point of BKB here. I really, really don't see any point of having a BKB other than if you suspect Tinker is going to be going for that sheep stick. Even in that case, even in that case, the chances that you effectively get a BKB off before Tinker can sheep stick you are, is so high. The chances are so high, right? Uh, whereas Lincoln, there's, there's no way of that happening. The only way that happens is if Nightstalker also builds a Blink Dagger and they both blink in at the same time and they, they both throw their uh, spells at the same time. So, chance of that, very low. Very, very low. So kind of sad to see the BKB coming in. I, I think that's a bad decision for sure. Dangerous area to be farming, but if you notice, 28 minutes in, more or less all he's done has, has been farming. And just getting a kill here or there, going for a team fight when there was an option. I'm, I expect him to TP in for this one. Uh, he is going to TP in. He's got his orchid ready. He's going to go for the Tinker. I, oh, he's not going to go for the Tinker. Why would you go there, dude? Really would have expected him to go for the Tinker. That's the silence that I was. It's like, what are you doing now? For eight seconds, you're not doing anything, really. 
Great team fight for these guys. Great team fight. Here we go. Here we go. What's that? Right, it's gonna turn it around. I'm not gonna turn it around. All right. Pretty great team fight for newbie. Um, there we go. We got BKB now. Obviously, BKB is great. There's no doubt about that. But it's just that it's kind of wasted gold. And also, who's to say you're not gonna get silenced before? You, sorry. I mean, you can always pop your BKB after a silence. Who's to say you're not gonna get sheepstick or Winter Wyvern's ultied um, before you pop your BKB? So. I think uh, Lincoln's is a superior. There we go. He's going to go for the Shivas now. That's definitely a fantastic item this game. I'm kind of surprised he's not sitting in laying traps for Tinker. I think he feels like, obviously, um, farming, getting big, is more important. And at the same time, if you look at the lineup on Newbie, they don't really have a really good carry. So Storm has to be the one to carry. He can't really make be the playmaker and be the be the assassin in a, in, in 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 ways. He can't really stand with his team to go for smoke ganks and waste time like that. He has to be the one who um, who they want to put the maximum amount of farm on so that. At the same time, you want to shut Tinker down, right? Tinker is farming really well as well. He has once Storm is still having a better game than Tinker because items on Storm, the items that Storm is making and the items on Storm are so much better than the items on Tinker because at the moment Tinker's got Blink, does absolutely nothing at all because Storm Spray is just going to catch him and um, no stats, no stats, you know. Um, Ags is the only item. Re wow, BKB on Tinker. Um, does not refresh from rearm, but obviously he thinks it's a necessary item. Obviously, you playing against a storm spirit. I feel like Yules. Um, ooh, nice. This is where Ravage comes in, and no Ravage. And Ravage. Here we go. Team fight one. That's a beautiful Ravage. Beautiful Ravage. Oh. Pregasm. That's what I'm talking about, boys. That's what I'm talking about. Tide Hunter. <laughs> uh, rip IG. What I'm talking about. So glad to be right. Um, and now Nibi sought to win. The only issue is uh, Tinker didn't die. That's like the only issue. I am so confused. Why is Storm not going for Tinker? I mean, now he can't because he's got a BKB because nobody put any pressure on him. But it's, it's just like newbie think that Storm is just not an issue. Uh, sorry, sorry, Tinker is just not an issue. That pressuring Tinker, nobody gives a shit about Tinker. I'm kind of surprised. And so far, it's been working out and Tinker isn't really having that big an impact. But as soon as he gets his next item, which is most likely... I'm gonna be a sheepstick, and he's actually got a sheepstick. Once he gets his sheepstick, that's gonna be a big, big issue, right? So it's kind of a kind of a dangerous one, to be honest. And this is where Storm really Storm is gonna die. Uh, oh yes, the <laughs> Agnims from Storm. Oh, I've been wanting to see that in a pro game for so long. Ags, Ags on Storm is broken. Now you've got. You've got Enigma and Tide in the same game. This is going to be so beautiful. Oh my god. All right. All right. Let's see what happens. I am pretty confident Newbie's got this in the bag. It's this is a GG. This is over. There's this 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 no How do you win against a Ravage and a Black Hole? 18 second Black Hole by the way. No way to cancel it either. 18 second Black Hole. Actually, I think, yeah, 2.5 seconds. This is 2.5 seconds. I think Black Hole is 3.25 uh, or 3.75. Where is Enigma? Four seconds throughout. Wow, okay. Black Hole is pretty good. <laughs> All right. Yeah, SCCC.
pretty pretty damn strong. Yeah, definitely VP are Chinese slayers because the thing with Chinese players, Chinese teams is they are very organized and they are always going to be more organized and more disciplined um, than any other team, right? Uh, hands down. And they know how to beat down organized teams. But when it comes to Russian teams, you know, Empire, VP, these guys are just run at you. They will, they have no organization. They, they have, the only organization they have is go, you know, just go. <laughs> so they all just go and Chinese teams just don't know how to deal with that. They, they just don't understand. Uh, they cannot deal with the aggression, the senseless aggression. And that's also some of the times why Russian teams just lose uh, simple games as well, because it's just aggression. And if a team has got the, their their number, if they know understand how to deal with that aggression, um, they get the, they they they, they um, defeat the Russian teams. That's what we saw in the uh, OG versus VP of the uh, last major. Anyway, so settle down now quite a lot. But this is this next team fight is gonna determine it. That, the thing is like. If newbie win the next team fight, they can take racks. If IG win the next team fight, they hold their base. So this next team fight is pretty damn important for pretty much both the teams, but more so for um, more so for IG if they want to keep their um, chances alive. Because definitely this game was the oh, fifteen thousand gold advantage. What? When did that happen? Um, it's the Ravage, man. It's the Ravage. <laughs> I swear to God, if this newbie loses, I'm going to be so sad. Not just because I said Tide would win whichever game Tide would be picked in, but also because uh, I'm kind of a bigger fan of, to be honest, burning, big big fan of burning as well. Um, but yeah, big big fan of SCCC. Just amazing. Just an amazing player. All right, so let's see what happens now. Uh, I would expect him to pick up. Okay, so is he going back for the Lincolns now? What? S Triple C, man, you making no sense. Why are you going for the Lincolns now? You got BKB, so he's he's he does not want to die. This is so defensive. Is it good enough? Because you're the only carry. So if you're going that defensive. Like, where's the damage? Where's the damage coming from your team? So this is going to be interesting because he actually even builds for uh, Ags. Like, no damage here, no damage BKB. I mean, BKB gives a little bit of damage, but that's not really a damage item. Like, you were talking about Monkey Kings and, you know, Desolators, and that's those are da damage items. Not that Storm makes those, but still, you want to be making some sort of a damage item. Not that uh, this isn't a good item on Storm. It's a great item on Storm, but still, like, you got... Um, this Orchid upgrade to Orchid is what he's going to be going for next for sure because that's the first damage item that he's going to go for. It. That's necessary as well at this point because you have no damage item. And even Orchid, even Bloodborne isn't really a guaranteed damage item because they can just Manta it off or BKB it off or like pretty sure Lycan's got to be... So I guess he's really poor and this guy's really poor and this guy's really poor and this guy's got BKB only and this guy's got Glimmer Cape so... Uh, this game's over, guys. <laughs> this game is so over. over now they're just building up a bigger and bigger advantage. Like, if I was Storm Spread right now, I would TP here. Oh, he doesn't have vision, obviously. Obviously, so I should actually do Radiant. No, Dire. Right, there we go. That's what Storm sees, so... Yeah, the map control... <laughs> the map control is there. So, right now... Because they've constricted IG so deep into the into their own base. Oh, or you're dead. Is he gonna make a run for it? He is, and he's not gonna catch anyone. Static remnant on the way would have been pretty nice because static remnant does give flying vision over 600 AOE. So 600? No, not 600. Um, it's, it's much smaller AOE. Uh. uh, uh, uh Remnants grant on security for their duration. It doesn't say how big the AOE is, but it's not 600. 600 is huge. It's more like probably around 300, right? Here I am. 
anyway, so yeah, so bigger and bigger goal difference going in and it goes from 15k net worth to 19k net worth. Now, IG isn't really doing anything and this this is becoming a really, really boring game. This is why I hate Chinese teams. <laughs> uh, or or rather, Chinese teams are really boring to watch. Who puts a Lycan Wolf on a Storm Spirit? Dude, he's going to zap away. How are you going to keep up? Oh! 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 Fight! See? There you go. Where, what's your BKB doing now, dude? Useless BKB all of a sudden. Black hole! Beautiful. Oh, uh, I was talking about Tide Ravage. Any team that picks Tide is gonna win because of the Ravage. You've got Tide, uh, Ravage, and Black Hole. I mean, obviously, newbie understand team fight is the way to go in this in this meta in this patch. So guaranteed, you will see. These guys are really smart, right? So guaranteed you're going to see more and more teams in the future picking more and more team fight uh, compositions, tides, enigmas, you know, even storm spirits with with um, yeah. So he's still getting sheeped up even though he has a Lincoln's. All right, really happy about this. I was right. Kuroki was...